another off season that's really important for uh, for our Seattle teams to storm and some stuff that's directly related and some stuff that uh, affects us not necessarily directly, but kind of. So we'll get into that um, with our storm. So unfortunately, we still don't have storm overseas information. So none of that this week. But the team did extend qualifying offers to Ezzy McBegor and Gabby Williams on the 12th. So that's great news. Of course, we know that um, there are some things that hold up Gabby Williams with her contract um, playing overseas. And I can't remember what that rule is that they're implementing um it's it's prioritization it's like a prioritization right. clause uh, i think if you miss any uh parts of spring at least this is how it was last year i think if you miss any part of training camp then you like can't play for the half the season or whole season Ooh. it's it's a substantial amount of time which is why a lot of people took issue with it um, yeah. because I mean, obviously this is an issue that, you know, kind of span it's, it, it goes to Brittany Griner as well. Right. Because of the fact that she was going to play overseas when everything took place yeah. is that these players earn money in the offseason, sometimes more money, um, than in the WNBA by playing overseas. So it's like, this is part of the way they live their lives. Um, even for some of them, I know they don't necessarily do it for the whole offseason. Some do it just to stay in game shape and improve their game. Right. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of you don't like seeing that for the WNBA you know it's, it's kind of something I wish they would just get rid of as a whole but yeah you're right it affects uh the way that Gabby looks at her contract right because it might she might not have anything against the storm organization it might just be right. with that prioritization clause so yeah it's, it's, so, it's certainly tough we'll keep posted but I'm very excited at the possibility of having both of them back um also announced on the 12th, the reigning champs Las Vegas Aces will be hosting the 2023 WNBA All-Star Game. So we move on to some news here that we just found out today, actually. Um, John Jones requested a trade from the Connecticut Sun and her only team of interest, the New York Liberty. So John Quill is being traded to the New York Liberty, Liberty sources confirmed to ESPN. The 2021 WNBA MVP with the Connecticut Sun requested the trade specifically to New York. The details have not been finalized, but New York would receive, is this receiver trade? Uh, that is receive. Okay. New York would receive JJ and Kay Thornton. Dallas would receive Natasha Howard and Dangerfield, and then Connecticut would receive the number six pick, Beck Allen and Ty Harris. So, of course, this is still developing. That hasn't been finalized. But this, how does this directly affect us? So, I mean, you look at it, you look at the optics for this, right? I mean, a player like John Quill Jones, I just, uh, I think you mentioned it with, what, the MVP award just two years ago. Um they have to pay Sabrina Ionescu. They take the, the Howard contract off there, but they have to pay uh, John Quill Jones, right? Mm-hmm. And with the sort of money that Brianna Stewart commands, <laughs> I mean, uh, Ionescu, Stewart, Jones doesn't make sense. I don't think it could happen. Uh, Cap-wise, I could be wrong. I, I would certainly not like to see that headline happen, but it just kind of seems, I was talking to Bell about it before we began here. It just seems like a move that would be made if, Liberty kind of felt like they weren't going to get Brianna Stewart. So I'm crossing my fingers still and knocking on the wood that this is a move that basically means uh, is, is signaling that Brianna Stewart is going to return. Um, it just doesn't, it, it seems unlikely considering the fact that um, the Liberty now have Jones and they made this move um, to acquire her. So that's, that's my look on it. Yeah, I think they would have to uh, release a high amount of salary cap space in order to make it happen. So as of now, I think that we can be a little bit cheerful um, for negotiations to begin. So in six days on the 21st, 21st, free agent negotiations do begin. And then on February 1st, free agent signings can begin. And that about wraps us up for the storm. 